All right, everybody. I'm Bob Taranjo, and you're in the reading room. We're so glad you're able to join us tonight. Uh, so glad uh, to be back with you doing this um, uh, service and teaching out of the uh, Jonathan Mitchell's New Testament Greek rendering. And uh, we're going to be reading tonight in the book of Ephesians, and uh, we'll be actually doing chapter 4, but I'm going to read before that a few verses so that we can continue where we left off at. Uh, you know, um, the last time I was able to do a reading room uh, was September the 23rd, I believe it was. So it's been a while. Uh, and I encourage you <clears throat> to go either on Facebook or YouTube and uh, watch the um, September the 23rd reading room. Um, I um, uh, went back and, and watched it myself, and I was really blessed by it. It was a powerful uh, uh, chapter, and the last few verses were very powerful. So that's the reason why I want to go back and uh, to the um, third chapter. But first... We want to come to the Lord so that he can help us to understand his word and to give us a, a spirit revelation uh, about Jesus Christ. All revelation is about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for those that are taking the time uh, to join with us, Lord. And I ask you, Father, that they will be blessed and that each and every one of us, our ears would be open to what the Spirit would be saying to the church, the ecclesia, in this day. Lord, I'm asking God for you to give your presence to us tonight in a real way, and that each one of us would be saturated with the Spirit of God, and that, Lord, uh, we would uh, learn more of you, that you would allow us, Lord, to see into your greatness, and that, Lord, uh, you would peel back the layers so that we can truly see you as you are. We thank you for the great plan of God that's in the scriptures. We thank you, Lord, for that plan that is going to involve every man, woman, and child, hallelujah, in the great redemptive act of Jesus Christ death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you tonight that we are right in the forefront of what you're doing in this day. We thank you, Lord, of what a privilege it is to be held back until this time. Oh, God, that you would birth us into this generation. So, Lord, we want to thank you and praise you tonight for all the things that you have done, the miraculous wonders that you have shown unto us. And we want to give you the praise and the glory and the honor forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Well, he has done great things for me. I'm so glad to be here. And uh, there were times in uh, this past recent uh, part of my life where uh, I could have went uh, home with the Lord at uh, several times, uh, but uh, I've always felt that I have something more to do in the Lord. So um, uh, I have confidence in him uh, that he will uh, uh, not uh, uh, cause any of us to be shortened in our journey in him, and we're assured of that in him. So there's no fear in us uh, concerning that. But I want to thank him that he's kept me for this hour. Hallelujah. Um, but let's start in Ephesians, uh, the third chapter in the 20th verse. And, and, and you should, you'll be reading it behind me on the screen. It says, uh, Paul uh, is writing, but by or now in the one being continuously able and powerful to do, make, form, create, and produce above and beyond all things. That's one thing that we need to know for a fact 
that we know our God and that we are able to discern how able and powerful he is to do what he says he's going to do. And I want us all to be able to see that, to know in Christ that 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 he would not say it if he was not able to do it. Praise the Lord. So to the one being uh, continuously able and powerful to do these things, uh, above and beyond all things, surpassingly above, over and beyond things which we are repeatedly asking for ourselves or are normally grasping with the mind, apprehending, imagining, considering, and conceiving. Now, again, when we see the parentheses or we see a semicolon, uh, that is additional rendering by other scholars. That's what I love about uh, Brother Mitchell uh, is that he has wrote this rendering, but with an eye to giving us all of the sir, uh, all of the truth of the scriptures uh, as possible, and that he doesn't mind, uh, and I don't mind taking more time to be able to have as much in-depth understanding as possible. So uh, I have so much respect for Jonathan that he's done this for us. And, uh, uh, and, and all of these other scholars that he has taken the time to draw from and to give us such an in-depth understanding of what the Greek is saying. So it doesn't just say, uh, he's not satisfied with saying, or are normally grasping with the mind. He includes other renderings saying, apprehending, imagining, considering, conceiving in our mind in accord with or down from, another rendering says, corresponding to, in the sphere of and along the line of the power and ability which is continuously operating, making itself effective, energizing itself, working and developing within us and in union with us, aren't you glad that all of these things are working and developing within us and in union with us by him, to him, for him, in him? Do you get an idea that it's all about him? Hallelujah. By him, to him, for him, in him, with him is the glory. Now, what is glory? There's so many people that have preached on what glory is. Well, the Greek says here very plainly, it's the manifestation which calls forth praise. Hallelujah. And I believe every one of us can testify that when we have been in the glory of God and it has made itself known to us, there is a revealing of the power and the presence of God that we cannot hold back the praise of God. Hallelujah. So whenever you hear people praising him in truth and in reality from their heart down from deep within them, it is by reason of the glory. Hallelujah. Which brings forth praise. Brother E.B. Uh, has written uh, in, in one of his articles, I remember, uh, and I don't know if it's in his current study or, or another study, but he was saying about how God does not demand our praise. Uh, he's not insecure, and he doesn't need us to praise him for him to be more than what he is. Uh, but his presence automatically brings forth praise. Hallelujah. And isn't it wonderful that praise is at the forefront of our walk in God, that that is what we automatically uh, uh, enter into, 
Uh, and I don't care if you're by yourself or if with your other people or if you're in a service. Uh, when the presence of the Lord comes, the praise comes because that is the glory of God. Hallelujah. So uh, by him is the glory, the manifestation which calls forth praise within the called out community, the summoned forth congregation. Now, when I was teaching on this in uh, September the 23rd, I was bringing out the fact that Paul was very interested and involved in the community of believers. He wasn't off to himself with a little clique of people. He was ministering to the whole ecclesia of God. And God was the one who was uh, uh, allowing the word to go to severally who he would have to hear it or who he would have not to hear it. But it's not our job to say this one's, uh, I like them, so they're going to hear it. I don't really particularly like them, so they're not going to hear it. Paul just included everybody into his ministry of teaching the gospel. but And it was up to God who was going to follow on after him. And I love that about Paul. The summoned forth congregation is the called out community. They've been summoned by God to come forth unto him. Hallelujah. And they're a congregation. We often refer to you, uh, dear ones, that are listening on Facebook and YouTube as our electronic congregation. Hallelujah. And how true it is. We are the congregation of the Lord, the called out ones. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The summoned forth of the Lord. Another rendering says, uh, proceeding into all the generations, the births and progenies of the age of the ages. The most significant, another rendering says, the most significant or crowning age of all ages. Make it so, or amen. So be it. Amen. Uh, and and uh, it's interesting to do the study on uh, the eons, uh, concordant, um, um, literal conco uh, con concordant publishing uh, com a company, I believe is what it is. They have a, a small book. It's not a large book but it's on the eons and the meaning of eon and eonian. And it breaks down when the scripture says forever and ever. Well, you can't have two evers. For it, so it's for the age of the age. And there is another Greek phrase that is this phrase, that says the age of the ages. And I bring out uh, on our last uh, teaching how that is the seventh age, which is not an individual age. It is made up of the former ages that includes itself within the seventh age. And that's what makes the seventh age or the seventh trump or the seventh angel, or the, uh, 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 and, and in Revelation, it goes on about the seven churches. That word seven is a complete number. And this is what we need to know about where we're at today. We are in the age of the ages. Now, no pressure on us, right? Simply because we're in the age of the ages and that we have been sent by God to bring forth the kingdom of God in the age of the ages and to have it revealed to the nations. No pressure. Hallelujah. Amen. But we are that company 
of, of, of first fruits that are going to bring forth the gospel, the good news in all of its fullness and all of its in content and intent for humanity and for the whole creation of God. So this is our age. This is the age that we have been uh, 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 called unto. And how privileged are we to be hearing this word at this time at such a, 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 a significant age that God is earmarked for himself. And we're reading that as Paul writes this to the uh, uh, called out ones in Ephesus. He is letting them know all of this is to let them know how great their calling is, how great the, the, the responsibility is for them to be able to understand what God is doing in their age. Hallelujah. So we go to the fourth chapter. And the first verse, and it says, I myself, or Paul, the prisoner, or bound one, captive within in union with and centered in the Lord, the Christ, or Yahweh. Uh, if you're going to be a prisoner, and when we say we are a servant of Jesus who is our master, that has connotations in a lot of people in modern day of being a, 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 a slave under uh, an unrighteous form of slavery. And uh, and this says it in the way that I see it in the spirit. I myself, the prisoner or bound one, we have no choice. We have no will in this. You don't have anything to say about it. You have no say so in it whatsoever. You're bound. You're, you're, you're shanghaied. Uh, you, you've been tied up and hit over the head and taken on the ship, hallelujah, and you have nothing to say about it, and you have entered into this captivity of the Lord. But it is not the captivity of days gone by where slaves were actually apprehended that way to be brought to America. This is a righteous master who we have known before, before the ages began, back in the Father, we knew our master, hallelujah. And he has come to reclaim us, to bring us back unto him, and to lock us up into him and his plan for us and for creation. So Paul says, within and in union with. This is a, a, a union that we have yielded to and willingly made ourselves one with him. Willingly, I say. He didn't have to uh, uh, chain us up. He didn't have to uh, lock us up in some prison house. The only lockup that we have is him, and that is heaven. Hallelujah. That is something that we all praise and bless the Lord. I want to be locked up in Jesus Christ. Can you imagine the life flowing through you as you are brought forth in union with him. Amen. Now, uh, back on September the 23rd, our last session, I was bringing out this uh, union, and I was bringing out how uh, it needs to be done not only between us and God, but between us, the body of Christ. Whatever happens between us and the Lord, that kind of oneness has to also be done within his body because he is our head. He's not sitting over there somewhere and we're all joined with him and the body's divided. The head is what unifies the body. And because Jesus is our head, 
we must become one. And I brought out on September the uh, 23rd about how this is how we are with our brother and sister and the Lord himself many, many times. Most of the time, we are rigid and we are closed up and nothing can get through to us. We, we are we are we have built a wall around us of safety. We don't trust each other. Sometimes we don't trust God. And so we don't open up in that union with him. And so when we come together, we're meeting like this. A solid wall of no no union, no fellowship or Love, just two things colliding with one another. And when Jesus is done working in us, this is what's going to happen. There is going to be an entwinement by the separating of our fingers or our protection, and we are going to form a bond that it is talking to in the Greek, an unbreakable bond. You see the strength in that versus this? This is where we are headed. And we have that with some that we know so well and that we love and they love us. Uh, But this is going to have to happen with everybody. And it's Jesus that's going to do that. But this is what I want to be with you. Amen and with the Lord himself. Praise God. So it's not enough to be this with Jesus. We all have to be this. And no, Bobby Jean, I'm not going to do the church and the steeple (laughs) and the people within the church. (laughs) Hallelujah. So I myself, the prisoner within and union with and centered in the Lord, Christ or Yahweh, am therefore repeatedly calling you folks. Isn't isn't that how we feel? We're repeatedly calling. Come on, folks, come on. We're better than this. Uh, This isn't what Christ wants. He doesn't want us skirmishing and fighting. Come on, folks. And, And Paul, you can imagine, he is speaking to people that are just uh, they don't have the uh, the insight and the experience that Paul went through on the road to Damascus. So how patient is Paul concerning the called out community that he says, I am therefore repeatedly calling you folks, as it were, alongside. May we always be able to come alongside one another. And may we be always uh, willing to exhort, admonish, implore, and entreat you to walk your path. Woo! That's powerful. Walk your path the way that has been pointed out to you. Walk in it. Don't walk in my path. Walk in your path that God has given to you. All of us have a path in Jesus, and we are going to have to find that path and walk in it no matter how many times people try to get us aside from it. We have to stay in that path. So he says, walk your path, behave, live your life worthily, pertaining to or in a manner suitable to the value of the calling and invitation in regard to which you folks are called. I can just hear Paul just, and I saw that in Romans also so much. He is just beating them over the head with this constant 
calling them and letting them know you are partakers of one of the greatest gifts that God has to give. And don't waste it on pettiness, on infighting, on doing things that don't pertain to the kingdom of God. Uh, 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 Live your life. Uh, behave in a, a, a worthy in a fashion worthily pertaining to the calling and invent, invitation in regard to which you folks are called or from which you were summoned. And you know what a summons is. It's where you receive a summons from the court and you have to appear. So this people and us today have received a summons, and we need to make sure that our calling is sure. Hallelujah. We're going to have many times that Jesus is going to visit us. There's many comings of the Lord. Uh, most Christians only know of one coming, and that's what they would call the rapture. But throughout our life, the Lord comes to us at various and sundry times, and he appears to us. And it's usually when there's a change going to happen in our life. And he will unveil something to us. And we will walk in that. And we will learn that. It'll be new to us. And many times we think, this is it. This is it, man. I've come to the final leg of my race. I don't see how it gets any better than this. You know, I didn't think it would get any better than being filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't see how anything could be better than that. And there's many times that I've thought, this is it. Uh, this, this is what's going to bring us into the fullness. And I would learn it, and I would be a baby in it, and I would mess up with it, and then I'd find my way in it, and then I'd find the path for it, and then I would become more familiar and more uh, confident in that working in me and I would minister it more and more confidently, and then it would come up to a place where I would be, uh, what's the scripture say, a craftsman with it. And then another appearing, another coming of the Lord, and I would go right back to knowing nothing, and I would have to learn it again. And I would have to fall in love with that again. And that's how it is. Many comings of the Lord. Uh, So uh, here he is. He's saying, I'm I'm imploring and entreating you to walk your path worthily pertaining to the calling and invitation in regard to which you folks are called with all lowliness of attitude. I'm sorry, the proud and the arrogant cannot enter into this. Paul makes that very plain. With all lowliness of attitude, another rendering says, humility in frame of mind. Wow. Humility in frame of mind. I prefer you, Phyllis, before me. I count you, Pauletta, as greater than I am in God. Bobby Jean, I count you as more knowledgeable about the Lord than I am, more able, more willing. And I see, as we start seeing each other, with this lowliness of attitude, not taking the high seat, taking the low seat. 
not expecting people to make a fuss over you, but you making a fuss over others. <laughs> what a difference. With all loneliness of attitude and gentle kindness and friendliness, with long suffering, even tempered, forbearing patience. Another rendering says, a long wait before rushing in passion, before rushing in passion. And uh, uh, last session, I told you that October the 4th, when Bobby Jean was going to come home from Michigan, that's what was going to happen. <laughs> And she ended in uh, coming even earlier, so praise God. <laughs> Putting anger far away. Listen, sons of God, all powerful ones, almighty remnant. <laughs> Those of you that think you have run so far ahead of the crowd, with all lowliness of attitude and gentle kindness and friendliness, with long suffering, even tempered, Forbearing patience, a long wait before rushing in passion, putting anger far away. That's your job. Uh, there's some things that God does without our participation. There's other things, dear ones, that God expects us to do. Now, I, I'm at odds with some that say we do nothing. Uh, it's all Jesus, and we do nothing. Uh, we obey. We, we walk in him. Uh, the Bible talks about obedience unto him. Yeah. The scriptures talks about many things. Having faith, believing God. That's all in the scripture. And... God equips us. What does he equip us for? To be able to use that equipment to the purpose that he has for us. So uh, putting anger far away, that's what you have to do. Passionate perseverance unto the goal. That's what you have to do. You run the race. Did it say Jesus is going to run the race for you? You run the race according to the uh, to the um, uh, course of the of the event that you're in. We're in the age of the ages, meaning that we are in a last leg into the fullness of God. So. If that's the case, we're going to have to run it with all that is within us. Hallelujah. Unto the goal, continuously holding one another up. No wonder we need to hold one another up. There's some of us that are going to get weak and weary in the race. There's some of us, you know, one of the most astounding things I'd ever seen was a, a, a women's, uh, I believe it was in uh, uh, the uh, Olympia uh, uh, Olympics, uh, a woman's race where this uh, uh, contestant, uh, there was a, oh, about six or seven women running the race on the track, and one of them fell. And the one that was up close to the winning the race stopped and went back and picked her up and carried her across the finish line. Now, that's a runner that was drilled into her. Win, 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 no matter at what cost, cross that line first. But you see, this isn't a first thing. This is companions in tribulation. This is members of family, of brothers and sisters in the Lord. And if we see one fall, we have to go back and get them. 
and carry them across the finish line. Are we willing to do that? I pray so, because God will try us on that. And some of us have already done that. Uh, instead of us saying we're, we are, I don't want to use a certain word, we are uh, better than others, and we're going to stay in that attitude of being better, then that isn't going to go back. Paul, in writing to the community, has within him the nature that demands that he brings others up to where he is. Hallelujah. We're not here to just singly or, or, or group-wise rush in to something because I'll tell you what's going to end up if anybody does that. They're just going to stand there until we get there. They're not going in without us. <laughs> and that's kind of funny because people break their necks trying to be first. And the first will be last. And the last will be first. And that's sad, but kind of funny at the same time. Because there's no understanding of how God operates. That's how he operates. You seek to uh, save your life, then lose it. If you try to save your life, uh, then you'll lose your life and everything else that you have. It's the opposite of what you would look at in the natural and think, well, I've got to be first, and no, that's up to God. I've got to be this. No, that's up to God. And this is what I feel today. If we're going to be in this final uh, race to the finish line, then we have to be single-minded, and we have to have love for one another, and we have to be living sacrifices for each other. This is what Paul's talking about. Continuously holding one another up. I'm sorry, my throat's kind of dry. My voice is getting stronger. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I can't go whoo very good, but <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> woo <-hoo. laughs> Continuously holding one another up within the sphere of and in union with love, unqualified acceptance, and the urge toward union. Repeatedly hurrying to make every effort to constantly keep the Spirit's oneness. Watch over to guard and protect and maintain the Spirit's oneness, to constantly keep that. Another rendering says, the unity from the breath effect. Whew, I feel that tonight. The breath effect and of Spirit. The oneness which is the Spirit. Agreement of your attitude within the bond or the link or the tie and connection that joins two things, the binding conjunction which results in union of the peace, another rendering says, which is the harmony tranquility, and undisturbed well-being of shalom from the joining. What's joining us? What is that, that joining element? The love of God, which is personified in Jesus Christ. It's his love that bonds us 
in an unbreakable bond. I'll tell you, the only one that I have ever met that comes close to doing this, to having these elements in their life, was Preston Eby. Now, he was one of the few that had one of the greatest words that I've ever heard, and deep, deeper than the ocean in God. Uh, but he, had, he was so humble so meek and unperturbed. (laughs) There's only one time I saw him perturbed, but that was in his living room (laughs) where nobody else was there. And I was more perturbed than he was at this brother (laughs) that was such a rooster, a wild rooster in the body, and we had just been in a meeting where he was at, and he showed his uh, anatomy so much in that meeting. When I was in Brother E.B.'s house, we both let our guard down. (laughs) But that was the only time that I've ever seen him perturbed. The man walked in peace. The man really ate the word and assimilated it. That's why he was so anointed. Don't you want to be that? We must be that. And he was such an inspiration. Fourth verse says, being one body and one spirit, attitude and effect of the breath. A lot of people say, oh, you're just talking. Yabba, 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 yabba. Just words. No, this is what we must have. This is what we must come into. Uh, I believe that we're at a changeover place. And I do believe that the oneness of the ministry of the kingdom ranks, the oneness of the people of God in the kingdom ranks. God is going to have that. And I shudder to think what God's going to do in order to have that. And I'm scared for myself. We have to learn war no more. And we have to start becoming friendly and loving and supporting and lifting up, and not going off on our tangents. We have to trust one another. And um, so let's assimilate this. Let's eat it, get it down into us, being one body and one spirit, according as you folks were also called within the midst of one expectation. Another rendering says, in union with one expectant hope of your calling or your invitation. Fifth verse says, with one Lord or owner, one faith. Another rendering says, faithfulness, fidelity loyalty, reliability, confidence, conviction, assurance, and trust. And another rendering says one belief, and that's Boltman that has that rendering. With one Lord, one faith, one effect of submersion and envelopment which brings absorption and permeation to the point of saturation. Saturation means you can't contain anymore. If something is submerged and it absorbs 
what it's submerged into. It reaches a point of saturation. And this is what Paul is saying to us. Envelopment, which brings absorption. Do we not need to absorb? Tell me, when you've been in meetings, don't you just sometimes just sit there and absorb like a sponge? Everything being said and done, and it just comes into your being, and you're permeated with it to the point of saturation. Whoo, hallelujah. Complete satisfaction. Complete uh, feeling of, of being not able to receive any more. Contentment. Six verse says, one God and Father of all humans. <laughs> he is the God of all humans. Whether they know his name or not, Amen. whether they're Buddhists or not, or serving any other God or not, he is the God and the Father of all humans, whether they know it or not. And one day they will. They will come to know him as he is. Hallelujah. The one, definite article, the, the one, uniquely one. That's what that article means. Uniquely and none other like one, the one upon all people and moving through all people and within the midst of all humanity and in union with all people and all things. <laughs> what point do you think Paul's trying to bring forth here to these people? He's the God of all humans. Now, I told you what God has done for you all, and I told you of your exceedingly great calling of God, and I've told you of your union with him, but I don't want you to get high-minded about that. I don't want you thinking like he is your personal, individual God and that he loves you more than anybody else. I want you to know that with the power that God is going to give to you, you need to know and understand that he is the everything of everything. God, all, in, all. Hallelujah. And I feel like pleading over and over for the sons of God to have this permeate them so that they can absorb this, so that they could quit having this better than thou egotistical uh, uh, attitude when it comes to their callings and the nations and their own fellow brethren in Christ. I pray that you can see this and understand this. The one upon all people and moving through all people and within the midst of all humanity and in union with all people and all things. Oh, my Lord. Let's just praise him for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Permeate us until we are saturated with this humility, Lord, with this level-mindedness, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Tear down our high places so that there's no groves in our mountains set up as idols to our highness, to our exaltations. Let there only be one exaltation in our midst. 
And that is the exaltation of Jesus, the Christ of God. I pray throughout all peoples everywhere, but especially for my own uh, household of faith, my, my own ranks of the kingdom. I pray, I pray, I pray for you that we will lay down all swords, all spears, that we would lay down our shields and our armor, and that we will embrace one another without the, 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 the feel of metal between us, without a suit of armor between us, that we would be entwined with one another. Hallelujah. And that that entwinement might exceed us, that it will go to all men everywhere according to God's plan. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. May God make this real in our hearts. Only God can change our minds and our hearts. Only God has the power to change our course. And Father, I pray, if any of us need a change of course, I pray that you will do it for us in Jesus' name and bring us into unity and oneness as we have never known before. Father, let there be an open door unto all who are willing and yearning to know the Father. Hallelujah. May we teach them your ways in Jesus' name, Lord. I speak this, Lord, as a creative word. I speak it in the name, the nature, the oneness, the uniqueness of the Lord Jesus Christ unto all people everywhere that, Lord, your spirit, which has been so long suffering, Lord, as we continually hearken unto them, that there will eventually be the end of all defenses. And that, Lord, we will be able to turn the kingdoms of men into the kingdoms of our Lord Jesus Christ. May this world be cleansed of its kingdoms, of its potentates, of its dictators, especially amongst the religious-minded people. Lord, topple their high towers. Oh, hallelujah. So that they can live in you, Lord. Don't let them continue on the path of deceit, but that, oh God, they might have life in you, that we would be joined together in you, that we could take their hurt away, Lord, that we could take away from there their filthy rags of self-righteousness, and that we might clothe them in the garments of praise and salvation. Oh, God, let this be. Let this be at the beginning of a turnover, Lord, of a turning to the Lord, a turning to the ways of the Lord. And I agree with all my brothers and sisters, my companions in tribulation, all of us that hold all the things of God as holy, and most precious to us. I pray that together we might see the tide turn and might see a people come together in a way that has never been seen before on the earth. Why not, Lord? You're a mighty God. And you've already said for us to trust in your power and in your abilities to do what we say for you to do, Lord. 
So amen and amen. We believe, Lord. We believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So glad we got to have this time together again. Uh, at this point, I'm expecting to be here next Friday. Uh, now with the uh, Christmas and coming up, uh, I don't know how things will work out that way, but we'll, we'll, we'll be open uh, to doing uh, the reading room uh, even at Christmas. Um, yes, the 23rd, I believe we can do that. Uh, and our Sunday morning services, uh, we will be taking uh, Christmas Day off, spending it with family and our children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And um, uh, we'll resume again uh, at the New Year. In fact, uh, Sunday will be New Year's Day. So we'll have a New Year's Day service. Bring in the new year. Glory to God. It'll be a whole year before we see you again. Okay. Uh, if you want to write to us, you can write to us at uh, the House of the Lord, uh, P.O. Box 0519, Dixon, Tennessee, 37056. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you want to write your prayer request to us, uh, Bobby Jean doesn't fool around, and I don't either. And when we get a prayer request, we pray for it. Yes. Almost always right at that time. Yes. Um, and uh, so be sure to do that. And uh, if you have an offering, you want to help us uh, in our expenses uh, in, in the ministry, which go beyond uh, putting videos up on the internet, um, then you can uh, include an offering uh, by check or money order made out to the house of the Lord. And on PayPal, the house of the Lord, Robert Taranjo, PayPal. Um, any other announcements? Thursday, uh, yeah, Sunday morning, this Sunday morning coming up, uh, 1030 uh, a.m. Central Time. We're going to be here, and we're going to have a mighty move of God. We want you to be with us. We're going to sing. We're going to praise Him. Yeah. We're going to give forth the Word. But everything, God willing, will be by the leading of the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want a format. We don't no. want a tradition. We just want to be led by the Spirit. And so be praying for us that we will do just that. And that the result will be glory, the manifestation, hallelujah, that brings forth the praises of God. Amen. God bless. We'll see you then.